ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧಸ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶ್ಲಾಘಯ ಚಕ್ಷುನ್ಮಿತ್ಥಮೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೆ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಷ್ಠ ಮೂತರೇ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಣೇಂದ್ರ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತಗದಾದರ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರವಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ರೇ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೈವೀಯಶ ಗುಣಮಯಿ ಮೌ ಮಾಯಾ ದುರತ್ಯ ಮಾಮೇವ ಯೇ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯಂತೆ ಮಾಯಾ ಮೇ ತಾಂ ತರಂತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ತ್ರೀ ಮೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಟು ಓವರ್ ಕಮ್ ಬಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಅನ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಕೆನ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಪಟ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ಯೂಮರೇಬಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎನರ್ಜೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನರ್ಜೀಸ್ and are therefore divine due to contact with material energy their original superior power is covered they due to contact with material energy original superior power is covered <coughs> being thus covered by material energy one cannot possibly overcome its influence as previously stated both the material and spiritual natures being emanations from the supreme personality of god are eternal the living beings belong to the eternal superior nature of the lord but due to contamination by the inferior nature matter their illusion is also eternal the conditioned soul is therefore called nitya baddha or eternally conditioned no one can trace out the history of his becoming conditioned at a certain date in material history consequently his release from the clutches of material nature is very difficult even though that material nature is an inferior energy because material energy is ultimately conducted by the supreme will which the living entity cannot overcome inferior material nature is defined here in as divine nature due to its divine connection and movement by the divine will being conducted by divine will material nature although inferior acts so wonderfully in the construction and destruction of the cosmic manifestation the vedas confirm this as follows mayam tu prakritim vidyan mainam tu maheshwaram although maya is false or temporary the background of maya is the supreme magician the personality of god it who is maheshwara the supreme controller another meaning of guna is rope it is to be understood that the conditioned slow soul is tightly tied by the ropes of illusion a man bound by the hands and feet cannot free himself he must be helped by a person who is unbound because the bound cannot help the bound the rescuer must be liberated therefore only lord krishna or his bona fide representative the spiritual master can release the conditioned soul without such superior help one cannot be freed from the bondage of material nature devotional service or krishna consciousness can help one gain such release krishna being the lord of the illusory energy can order this insurmountable energy to release the conditioned soul he orders this release out of his causeless mercy on the surrendered soul and out of his parental paternal affection for the living entity who is originally a beloved son of the lord therefore surrender unto the lotus feet of the lord is the only means to get free from the clutches of the stringent material nature the words mam eva are also significant mam means unto krishna only and not brahma or shiva although brahma and shiva are greatly elevated and are almost on the level of vishnu 
it is not possible for such incarnations of rajoguna and tamoguna to release the conditioned soul from the clutches of maya in other words both brahma and shiva are also under the influence of maya only vishnu is the master of maya therefore he alone can give release to the conditioned soul the vedas confirm this in the phrase tam eva viditva our freedom is possible only by understanding krishna even lord shiva affirms that liberation can be achieved only by the mercy of vishnu lord shiva says mukti pradata sarvesham vishnu deva na samshaya there is no doubt that vishnu is the deliverer of liberation for everyone the key here is that one has to surrender because otherwise the material energy being directed by the supreme will is very very powerful so even though we as spirit soul are superior energy compared to the material inferior energy we cannot overcome our influence unless we surrender to krishna mm think for purpose be straight forward anybody has any questions Yeah, and krishna has to order his insurmountable energy to release only when he orders will she release and when will he order when we are surrendered and when he feels uh, that we are ready to be released that actually we have even though we are here we have practically got disconnected from the material world around us then he will order in the release which means that basically we are engaged in bhakti and we are not affected by the world around us or we are completely surrendered and then he uh, see the whole idea of maya is to punish us for i mean to bring remembrance of krishna so one who has come to that platform of remembering krishna all the time and serving him lovingly actually there is no need for maya but um just to make sure that it's not a temporary state of affairs maya continues her actions and even a fully surrendered soul for some time till it's very clear that there is not going to be any fall down so that means that we will have to go through some tests and if we pass those tests then krishna will order the release otherwise still some training is required so the situation will continue krishna will give us intelligence to understand to act and then eventually when we pass the test then he will order the release so literally every moment is test is training that we are on we are undergoing to be able to overcome this maya Oh, by surrendering to krishna and krishna will also see how sincerely we are trying how much we are depending on him so all these things will then uh, he will feel merciful towards the jiva and then order his release 
So Prabhupada is saying surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord is the only means. You know, what is surrender? Is we already discussed Anukulisa Sankalpa Pratikulisa Vajanam. Dakshishatiti Vishwasa Gopthrutve Varnam Tata Atma Nikshepa Karpanya Shadvita Sharanagar. So one has to be completely surrendered to the Lord Krishna in all situations. Always depend on him. Always think about him. Only then one can escape Maya. Actually, what is Maya? Maya is basically thinking of anything which is not being connected to Krishna or separate from Krishna is Maya. So when we start looking at everything in this material world and seeing it in connection with Krishna, then there's no Maya for that liberated person. Then obviously that means that Krishna has ordered the release. Hmm. So both, uh, so we also have to practice um, getting freed from this, you know, Maya influence of Maya, which means that free from seeing anything as disconnected with Krishna, and also do devotional service, and then Krishna will order the release at the right time. Okay, but till then, uh, it is material world is a struggle. So we have to just continue to fight in the association of devotees, most important. Okay, any thoughts? Hare Krishna Praji. Hare Krishna. So, a soul has to come to a stage of, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, engaging 24 hours in devotional service for Krishna to order the release. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 24. Yeah. I mean, basically, 24 hours means what? Like we are sleeping. <laughs> uh, yeah, but basically, 24 hours, not attracted to material world first. Hmm. That is a criteria because this is stage of liberation. This is not the stage of pure love of Krishna. Mm -hmm. right? To get liberated, one has to be always disconnected from this material world. So that disconnection is what is important. So when we surrender, automatically disconnection also happens because Asadeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prajita Janayato Ashu Vairagim Gnanam Chaya Dahitkam. So Gnana and Vairagya has to manifest. When Vairagya manifests, hmm, that means that we become detached from this material world. Then Krishna will order the release. So, so, so it's utmost required that we come to, uh, we have to accept the stage of Anaprastha and then move not Vana Prastha. So this is Patma Patram Ivambasa. This is even if we are Grastha, we are we should be unaffected by things around us. And that is possible only when we engage in devotional service. So basically there are two paths. One is the path of Gnana, where we can understand saying that okay, all this this whole world is anyway illusion. And uh, yeah, like if you read 11th canto of Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and all that. So by Gnana, one can actually become detached. Saying, mm -hmm. okay, all this is anyway nonsense. But that requires also some bit of spiritual strength uh, to be able to do that. Or one becomes completely engaged in Bhakti. One of them has to happen. Either way, as in it can be either this way or that way, it depends on what works for an individual. So even by getting knowledge, uh, one can try and, you know, depending on Krishna, one can try and uh, give up this material attachment. Or pray to Krishna saying that, give me, enable me to get detached. So then Krishna will create situations, uh, which if we can understand, then we can get out, uh, become detached.
yeah either through gnana or through bhakti one has to develop detachment to this material world okay so so it's not mandatory to move from grihastha to vanaprastha no no absolutely not okay. it's not mandatory but uh, why it is uh, i emphasize this because otherwise we'll get stuck in grihastha hmm. and grihastha means we will get stuck in attachment hmm. if we live without attachment we can be in grihastha also grihastha means what basically we are see I, whole point about grihastha to vanaprastha is to give up a uh, whole attachment and engagement two things actually engagement in material activities and attachment first okay. engagement has to reduce if engagement itself is doesn't reduce how will detachment come yes so that vanaprastha is to ensure that we will become disengaged hmm. from material things now one can technically still remain a grihastha which means that he is staying with his wife and still uh, become you know put an end to his material activities that's okay because vanaprastha for devotees means husband and wife together go to holy places engage in devotional service together mm. etc right yes but material activities are stopped yeah yes okay okay yeah yes please yeah yeah and pranjay this is regarding the last aspect of surrender uh, come giving completely oneself to the lotus feet of lord krishna mm mm-hmm. uh, can you please explain on that like the other uh, five aspects they cover this one right like this mm, yes and no in the sense that uh, ಅನುಕೂಲಿಸಂಕಲ್ಪ್ರಾತಿಕೂಲಿಸಂಕಲ್ಪ್ರಾತಿಕೂಲಿಸಂಕಲ್ಪ್ರಾತಿಕೂ
you should think about it as like throwing oneself at the lotus feet of the lord what is really throwing oneself means not putting ourselves not shell taking shelter not like that just throwing meaning whatever you want to do you do mm mm-hmm. okay okay is yes, right so so the yeah. earlier earlier five mm-hmm. stages not uh, uh perfect stages is it this last one is a no perfect. i mean these are stages you can think of as stages right like the, the these are different aspects also in some sense right see anukula sankalpa pratikula savarjanam means decision making mm-hmm. right you know these are just this has to happen all the time we have to be thinking like this saying that okay do things favorable for bhakti give up things not favorable now when you are doing that what is the frame of mind frame of mind should be saying that okay rakshishati ti vishwas okay krishna will protect i have the confidence mm-hmm. and anyway he is the maintainer now with this in mind we will do take decisions mm-hmm. okay now and then of course namrata that also humility has to be there but this doesn't necessarily say that you are completely thrown yourself at krishna's lotus feet you are still taking your decisions but you are doing favorable things like that right mm-hmm. but as you make progress you say forget about this favorable non favorable i don't care i am mm-hmm. just going to surrender to krishna right mm-hmm. and you are not even really bothered to yeah i think i'm saying full surrender just completely totally depending on krishna mm-hmm. that's a very high stage Mm, yes. the rest of them are basically initial stages to give faith confidence saying okay krishna will do something don't worry okay okay, okay fine then i will do rakshi then i will do anukula sankalpa pratikula savarjanam then this uh, atmanik shepa is like whatever he wants let him do <laughs> it's, mm. it's a very very exalted stay like ambrish maharaj pralad maharaj in this atmani vedana stay like uh, simply complete surrender no amrish maharaj is not even praying for himself pralad maharaj is not even praying for himself he has danger right in front of him mm. saying okay if krishna wants let him protect it's up to him yeah. so that yeah that is top class surrender okay okay Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Yeah. You you want more details? You can read this uh, songs by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. It is called Sharanagati. The series is called Sharanagati. So there are multiple songs, mm. and Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually explains various aspects of uh, all these different stages and how to think about it, like in the form of songs. Say, wow, how to think about. anukulis sankalpa pratikulis varjanam like that mm. Mm. so you will get a more practical clearer understanding if you read those songs okay it's available on desire tree etc okay prajya yeah. thank you yeah. okay okay anybody has any other questions okay okay so this will not be this will take one day okay so we'll stop here um uh veera prabhu's question about uh, mode of uh, you know demigod worship in different modes and also parallelly uh, worshiping ghost spirits demons etc so we should understand when we see anything in shastra which seems contradictory first thing that has to come to our mind is saying that both are true both are true now it's just that you know it's inconceivable for us to understand how it is true so one way of thinking about this is like um both are both are existing saying that at a lower grade uh people are just wor- worshiping ghosts and spirits like the grossest of ignorance uh, they are worshiping ghosts and spirits and when they make a little bit progress um, start moving you know upwards maybe they will worship uh, demigods instead of 
ghosts and spirits or you can also think about it as both exist in the mode of ignorance there are people who worship ghosts and spirit also and there are people who worship um, demigods in mode of ignorance also so both exist so basically what it means is that there are different types of people it's not one or the other or uh, it's not like this is right and that is wrong both are right and it parallelly exists that's it so it could be that somebody is taking one path and somebody else could be taking another path but they are both in the mode of ignorance okay prabhu ji yeah okay i think so then we will close here and we will discuss this 7.15 oh, each of these are very big verses and important to 7.15 is okay 7.16 is well, actually yeah i mean it's not very difficult to understand the difficult part was 7.14 so if you understood 7.14 then i think it's good 7.14 uh, i mean you can talk about it infinitely because this is our crux of our story in the material world that we are so badly stuck um okay maybe another 5 minutes i'll just talk a little more about this many a times you know we see devotees talking about how prakriti is so strong like oh i my nature is is like this prabhu i am not able to change my nature you know so uh while prakriti is so strong that literally it almost feels like it's impossible to change our nature bhakti is even stronger bhakti is so strong that literally maya cannot stand in front of her but we don't do bhakti with that intensity if we do bhakti with intensity tivrena bhakti hogena then material nature cannot exercise her influence on her but mostly we might not be engaging in tivra bhakti so it looks like we are badly stuck it looks like maya is very very powerful right and then the uh, devotee say okay see because i am not able to my nature is preventing my progress in devotion bhakti devi is independent bhakti devi is all powerful uh, so we can't and that that is when that is why you know we talk about power of association because when we associate with those devotees who are anyway engaging irrespective of what situation they are in then we'll also get influenced by that so that means that really nature is not cannot prevent us from doing bhakti but if we are by ourselves then many times it looks like pretty much impossible then oh i'm stuck badly stuck i can't make any progress so it is very difficult very very difficult to overcome this that is a proper the saying that you know don't ever be complacent about maya maya can pull you down any time any time she is so powerful and we are not really so we are not made real progress for us to be taking on maya propat said i can kick maya on her. you know and you can kick maya right but we can't we can't uh, be like that we can't be like that so we have to surrender we have to surrender to krishna depend on krishna uh, association of devotees only then we can fight maya and fighting maya is a every minute thing it's a every minute thing so we have to understand that uh, it's very difficult but yet we have to do it hmm don't we should never feel let down we should know that maya is powerful <laughs> it's not like i am weak i might be weak also but maya is still powerful so fight 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 that's all we can do the shelter of krishna association of devotees guru maharaj and just keep fighting maya Hmm. so if you fully surrender then it's very easy to overcome but it that itself takes long time for us full surrender okay i think that's enough so
to kindly meditate on this and uh, yeah and introspect to understand where you stand and what maya what aspects of maya are attacking you how can you overcome those how can you make progress you, know, you have to introspect meditate on your own situations and then make sure that you know you're not going down and in case you are going down then immediately connect with the devotees who can help you one thing is very important right if suppose say your bhakti is going down parameters are going down i mean it's like you know in the icu that machines will be there right will be seeing coin 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 as soon as little parameter goes on it starts making noise so as soon as you detect you when slightly that you are going down immediately connect with the devotees immediately don't think okay i will fight maybe today is like this tomorrow i can do okay that is fine but tomorrow also same thing happen don't push it forward don't think that you have the strength to overcome maya immediately connect because maya is so powerful that she'll push you into such a corner that coming out of it will become seem like impossible i mean you as in it will push one into such a corner right so we should never let maya act if you are seeing that something is happening our sadhana is going down uh, something anything right you know we all know what all symptoms we should look for sadhana is going down we are not associating with devotees uh, you know we are sleeping more than required uh any changes in our attitude towards bhakti devotees etc immediately immediately contact devotees because if we don't then we might just fall and once we fall getting up is very difficult it's better to just somehow manage hold on to something before falling reduce the you know pain of the uh, all right so very important okay okay so i think i'll stop there unless anybody has anything to ask otherwise we'll conclude for the day okay then ancha kalpatur bishta kripa sindhu bhav cha patitanam bhavane bhi vishnu vibhu namo namaha समवेत गौर भक्त बंद की जय हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू प्रजी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण धन्यवाद धन्यवाद प्रभु